Hi, today I want to talk to you about adding a shading layer to the sky that you'll have seen me print in a previous video. So what I have here is a one that I've just put a shading on to show you before I get started so you can see what um, I'm going to do. And you'll notice that we have the, the sky colour there and then there's this darker shading here. Now this is very much back to my experience of Japanese woodblock printing in Japan. If you look at Japanese, traditional Japanese woodblock prints, you'll often see the use of a bleed of colour, notably in skies of landscapes. Um, in Japanese printmaking that's called a bokashi and what I'm doing here with the lino cut is a very similar effect in lino terms, it's kind of related to rainbow rolling, where you have different colours on uh, opposing ends of the roller and you blend them together to make a colour change across the roller. But this technique is slightly different and it's one that um, I've kind of developed uh, in my own studio for getting a much more sort of Japanese bokashi effect. So I'm going to show you um, how to do that now. So before I put my paper in place to take the next print, I've already, as you saw, been printing these Bokashi shadings on other prints. And a good tip is to remember in between printings to have a look at the lino and check that there is no buildup of extender. If you watched the film about using extender, you'll remember that I said that it could be quite sticky. And with a print like this, where there's like uh, the cutting mimics the splashes of paint and there are some very long thin bits of lino to be printed, the extender can actually build up on either side of the lino and, and make it clumsy. So what I'm going to do is in between every print, I'm just going to go in with the cloth and check any fine detail lines, get a little wipe so that there's no build-up of extender and I'm just checking generally to see that the plate, I don't, I'm, I'm not cleaning the whole plate, I'm just checking to see that there aren't any bits um, that are getting mucky. So just a little bit of housekeeping in between prints. So now that's done I can get the paper in place. So before I put the paper into place ready to print, I'm just going to pop a bit of card in place to protect the print from the ink that's on the plate. There's very little ink on it, but I'm not going to take the chance that I might get some transfer. So I'm just going to pop a piece of card into place and now I'm ready. So I'm going to put my print down into place and this is where the registration really comes into play. It is essential for this print that everything lines up perfectly because remember we got those little splatters of paint and if they are out of register at all it ruins the effect. Now it really depends how you work. For me registration is everything. I really rely on a completely crisp registration system. I'm not saying that's how everybody has to work. And some people are brilliant at exploiting slight off register printmaking, but that's not for me. So for me, really, really crucial that everything lines up. So I'm just gonna take my time and check. And you can see that the paper is translucent enough for me to be able to look through it to my registration marks and make sure that they line up. Now this takes time and patience to just get it right, but I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be accurate here. Okay, I think we're on the money. So now I can get on with the printing. So now I'm going to show you the inking up for the shading that we want to do. And if I just talk you through these piles of ink here, 
up at the top is um, the original blue that I mixed for the first layer of the sky. So I mixed enough to have like um, kind of a mother load that I can use for doing the shading. It doesn't really matter. Um, I could have mixed another batch of it, but it, it, it's just convenient and it means that the shading is the same colour as the sky, which is what I want in this instance. So um, I've got my original dark mix up here. Here I have mixed up um, some of that blue with extender, so it's fairly transparent and I'm going to use so little of it that it will be very pale. Over here on this piece of paper, I wanted to show you this. Now, I needed to get my hand in before we started filming, so I've actually printed most of the edition before we started. And again, with the extender, because it's sticky, about halfway through, I just scraped everything down and cleaned everything off because it was starting to build up dust and hairs and becoming a bit too, a bit too grotty. So here is the scraping off. And I know that looks wasteful, but um, it's not in terms of me producing serious professional quality prints that I can sell. So it's a bit it's a bit of quality control to make sure that the extender is working well. So now I need to put my extender out to put a shading on. And if you look here, you can see that I've got ink and it's only going down one side of the roller. Now, if you have done rainbow rolling and mixing colours, it's always the whole roller that's used. Um, and when I'm doing a shading like this, I don't ink the whole roller. So I'm only going to put ink on half of it. So what I'm going to do is to just put a little bit of ink here and just start rolling it out. And hopefully you can see just how little ink that is. Really, really not much at all. And I'm taking my time and I'm really working it because I need that to um, be a soft blend. There's no point putting a shading on if it's got any hard edges or clumsy bits. So just working the inks. Um, you'll remember from the episode about inks that I spoke about how they get better the more you work them and that's that's very true especially with extender so I'm going to take my time to roll it out and then I'm going to go and put it on the lino so you're probably um, some of you will be thinking well why doesn't she just rainbow roll with very thin pale blue at one end and then this darker blue in the other why go to all the trouble of putting a layer of um, the light blue down and then doing the shading and the reason for that is because when the ink is as thin as i've got it it's really hard to put a very very pale layer on and a darker one as a rainbow roll and not have roller marks in the pale area because every part of that roller will change the surface. So I find it much easier to do the first pale colour as a flat inking where I can work the roller over the whole piece of lino and even everything up and get a perfectly flat layer take that impression then I come in with this roller and then I can work it round the edges like so without worrying that I'm going to be making um, marks in this area because of course there's no ink on this end of the roller so it makes the registration harder but it's better for the print and if you're going to do a good job, and especially if you want to sell work, then it's it's important to really think about stuff like that and to go for the method that's going to give you the finest result rather than going for the easiest method. Sometimes you can be clever and there are ways of making things easy and good and that's wonderful. 
but a lot of times they aren't and I just think it's worth thinking about stuff like that because this is my livelihood it's it's not a thing I do as a hobby it's a thing that I do to sell so I feel very strongly that I want to do the very best for my clients and the very best for what I can do um, with my skills so I you know I, I worry about stuff like that so I'm just going to work my way around like so and what I'm doing is being really sure that I'm getting an even layer on these edgy bits so I'm just going to go back and get a little bit more ink and just work it and I'm just taking my time and working the roller And just like before, I'm just going back over it nice and lightly so that there are no obvious roller marks in the darker area there. Right. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is just check and wipe away any areas that I think I don't want to print like for example on this top bit of the hill I don't want to like a harsh line across it so I'm just going to blur that in case there's a line there um, which might show when the next layer of ink goes on so always you know taking my time to check that everything's clean okay and again just being careful this kit of cutter paper is very delicate and it can move slightly so I'm just always being careful to double check everything before it goes in the press and three sheets of my card so not a lot of pressure going on here And you can see, in spite of the fact that there was barely any pressure, it's plenty for what I need here. So let's just, I'm just releasing the tape before I take it off. Very important to be careful not to crease the paper because when it's stuck to the ink like this, it's really easy when you remove it to kink it and put a crease in it. So I'm just going to very carefully pull it back. So let me just lay that down on some white card. For you to see the end result. So as you can see, registration is holding nicely and it gives that very, very delicate bleed. And um, I've had a couple of questions from people saying, well, how do you make it so translucent? And it is just really really little ink uh, so that's really the trick of it this paper has a lovely smooth surface so it's really helping me to get an even layer um, but it's it's really just sort of delicacy of touch and it will take practice I'm probably making it look very simple but it does take practice to get those flat sheets of thin colour but I hope you'll join me again um, and next time we'll be possibly putting a cloud in, possibly not. I haven't decided yet, so we'll see how we go. Thanks for watching.